Carlin has been in and out of intensive care all of his short life. Born in kidney failure, he came here to get life-sustaining treatment, but instead his surroundings may contain a deadly threat. It kills people, this one right here. This one, is, the, the mortality rate uh, in, in some of the outbreaks has been as high as 40 percent. Terrifying. They're called superbugs, and they have an uh, enemy in well. this man. No, these are, these are very dangerous organisms. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Robert Mollering at Harvard's Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center has devoted more than 40 years to studying them. Why do you love these bugs so much? <laughs> They're among the most interesting things that we, that we can study. What he finds interesting, many people find terrifying. That's because superbugs are extraordinarily resilient bacteria. They tend to infect hospital patients and even kill those who are extremely ill. The most recent study on healthcare associated infections in U.S. hospitals found that out of about 1.7 million infections, nearly 99,000 patients died. According to one of the study's authors, the vast majority of the deaths were due to superbugs. Are some superbugs resistant to all the antibiotics that we have at our disposal? A few of them are literally resistant to everything. Fortunately, uh, these are the exceptions rather than the rule. But the fact that we have any of these at all is cause for alarm because the only thing we can say is we're sure to see more of these as time goes on. Superbugs can enter a patient through surgical wounds and catheters, including IVs. Uncontrolled, they continue to move throughout the body, attacking a person's organs. At the top of your list, what are the the bacteria that you're most concerned about now? Are the so-called escape organisms, uh, uh, and that includes organisms uh, called enterococci, staphylococci, Klebsiella, acinetobacter, pseudomonas, uh, and uh, enterobacter. The reason that we're concerned and the reason that they're singled out uh, is because uh, these are the ones that commonly cause infections in humans, and these are the ones that have developed uh, multiple resistance. Take Acinetobacter. Dr. Mollering says it's resistant to just about everything. It only recently came to this country. The war wounds in Iraq often became infected uh, with Acinetobacter. Soldiers were then bringing it back to military bases and ultimately to uh, hospitals, military hospitals in the United States. Uh, and it shows the ability of this particular organism uh, to uh, get into a hospital and shows the difficulty in, 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 in getting rid of it when that happens. In fact, most superbugs, in addition to run-of-the-mill viruses and bacteria, make the job of cleaning and disinfecting hospitals even more challenging. So Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland, has implemented a high-tech approach, investing in two pairs of state-of-the-art robots to disinfect ICU rooms. The robots spew vapors of hydrogen peroxide. We hear that superbugs are so hard to kill, it's incredible that hydrogen peroxide can kill them. The concentration that's required is very high and toxic. I see. I see. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Trish Pearl. So and hydrogen peroxide isn't the hydrogen peroxide you put on your cuts? Exactly. That's 2%. Okay. This is 35%. Dr. Pearl has studied how well the robots work against superbugs. They actually are highly effective. She found a 90% reduction in the room and a 60% decrease in transmission from one patient to the next. Oh, it changed culture because we could look at people and say, this room is essentially sterile now. And that is perhaps more important now than ever. A deadly strain of Klebsiella recently made headlines when there was an outbreak of the superbug at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Seven patients died. Dr. Mullering says there will be more outbreaks because, like other superbugs, Klebsiella is always changing. They are able to pick up new resistance genes, and uh, I suspect that we're just going to see continued uh, uh, progression of resistance in these organisms. Which makes treatment all the more difficult. The mortality rate for this particular strain of Klebsiella is 30 to 40 percent. 
for an infectious disease, that's very high. I mean, a mortality rate of more than uh, two or three percent is really high. Dr. Mollering says other superbugs are also dangerous, just in different ways. Take MRSA, which stands for Methicillin Resistant Staph Aureus. Even though it has resistant in its name, drug resistance isn't what makes MRSA most troubling. MRSA is not resistant to absolutely everything yet. Uh, the reason it's a big problem is because the organisms uh, are easily spread from person to person. So it moves so quickly, it's almost hard to catch up to it. Yes, and it can cause such a wide variety of infections. It can literally infect every tissue of the body uh, except uh, the fingernails uh, uh, and, uh, and, and the teeth. And that can be life-threatening to patients like little Harrison Carlin. So Johns Hopkins instituted a protocol of washing all children in its ICU in a special antiseptic called chlorhexidine. It's like taking a giant wet one yes. and wiping all over. We start with the chin and we wipe the entire body from the chin down. Pediatric infectious disease specialist Aaron Millstone found it protects them from blood infections, and he's now testing if it will protect them from MRSA, too. An early study funded by the CDC showed that uh, bathing ICU patients, hospitalized adults with chlorhexidine, reduced the spread of MRSA by about, I think it was 35 percent. And so you're replicating that study now with children. Right. Those are the studies that we're doing now. Right. There are now incentives uh, to decrease infection rates, uh, financial incentives uh, from the federal government. But Harvard's Dr. Robert Mullering says that's not enough. Until more money is spent on antibiotic research, superbugs can't and won't be stopped. Well, this is a ticking time bomb because of the fact that the bacteria are, are developing resistance mechanisms more rapidly now than we can find new antibiotics. And it is, in, in a very real sense, an emergency. We, we, we need to deal with this soon uh, or, or we're back to the pre-antibiotic era. And mortality rates then were really grim. They were. When